the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here coming to you live on a Wednesday from the News Channel 5 Network studios. I'm here at the station along with Mary Elena back in control. And we've got another, I think, very good show for you as every day we try to bring you new, fresh information on the pandemic. And not of all of it's depressing. A lot of it we're trying to show the positives of what's going on. And we invite you to join in the conversation. As usual, we're coming to you right now on the Plus. We're also streaming live as we've been on Facebook at newschannel5.com and if you're joining us there you can message us comments now we have a busy show with guests i'll try to get to phone calls and comments from you in the third segment today but uh the first segment, we've got a couple of guests. I'm going to introduce them in just a moment here, and we're going to be starting off looking at as the state reopens. And we know the governor issued that executive order yesterday. Metro following suit, maybe a step behind. They're going to decide a little slower when to reopen. But we know restaurants are already on that path right now. And that's a big question for a lot of us. How safe will things be in the restaurants, not just for customers, but for the employees now who are returning? And that's what we're going to talk about with our two guests. Let's bring them up right Right now, we have Vonda McDaniel joining us. She's president of the Central Labor Council of Nashville. And Brenda Waybrant. I think, did I get that right, Brenda Waybrant? And she's Restaurant Opportunity Center. Can you both hear me electronically this morning? We can. We can. Awesome. Loud and clear. I love it when technology works. Let me start with uh, both of you. This is a question you, you each can answer one after the other, and we'll start off with Vonda. But um, all right, I think the big question for people as this begins to reopen is how safe is it going to be? From your perspective, Vonda, not only for the employees, but the, the customers as well, how confident are you that people will return and when they do it will be safe? So um, I think that that is on a case by case, place by place basis. Um, you know, if employers are in, engaging the social distancing and people are wearing PPE and have gloves on, I think that, you know, folks should feel confident to begin to move about slowly. But it is important that each workplace is employing um, all of the recommendations by the CDC. Brenda? You know, like Vonda said, we don't know. It is a case-by-case -case basis. Um, we don't have an oversight board that's responsible for going and checking if every restaurant is gonna be complying with PPE measures and with social distancing measures. Um, we don't know. Um, the virus is carried by air. We don't know if, if that's gonna be safe with customers without PPE eating. Um, so we don't know. Do you see a difference perhaps, um, and you think about the wide range of wonderful restaurants we have in, in Nashville, for instance, but throughout Middle Tennessee, a difference in the way it'll be handled by the larger restaurants, maybe the chain restaurants, and then maybe some of the smaller ones that are maybe privately owned, the small businesses. Do they think about it in different ways, would you imagine? Um, absolutely. And I also think that access to uh, adequate PPE and all the sanitizing, I mean, th those things are still scarce. And so their ability to access is based on, you know, what's available in the market. So I, I think that that's going to play be a factor in terms of how they are able to make sure that they're um, places of business are safe. Well, for instance, like Brenda, um, okay, we have a situation here, and this is a question that really pretty darn obvious that I haven't asked yet, but several people on Facebook hit me up with it, and they say, look, we want to be in there, we want to be safe and do social separation. I know you represent restaurant workers and make sure that they have a safe environment, but people are talking about how, how am I going to go into a restaurant wearing a mask? and eat. I mean, tangibly speaking, walk me through when you go to one of these restaurants for the first time, how is that going to happen? How will the ordering happen? And at what point can maybe someone remove their mask and start eating their meal? Yeah, I don't know. And that's something that we haven't had guidelines on um, and oversight on. So, I mean, we have been hearing servers should roll their silverware and put them in a stored bin and have gloves on when they roll silver and roll them away from people. Hmm. We'll use menus that we can throw out that are disposable. Some restaurants have QR codes so people can order through their phones and they're not touching things. But at the end of the day, if you're in a full service restaurant, you do have to take a mask off sure. to eat regardless of <laughs> you're in a full service restaurant or not. 
Um, but a server still has to touch your used napkins and your plates and your silverware and your dirty glasses um, and any other garbage that people leave on the tables. And I'm gonna tell you, I wash my hands probably a hundred times a day in a regular case. And my hands were raw and chapped the last time I worked, the last shift that I worked because I washed them literally every time I talk to somebody. All right, see, so yeah, without those clear guidelines, I, but no one knows the restaurant business like those who work in it. So Vonda, what do you think along those same lines? Uh, what do you expect? I'm trying to think common sense. I mean, I assume I will go in, I'll have my mask on and I'll social separate, but a waiter will come over, a waitress, and I will give them my order and then they'll take off and go get it. And when they bring me my food and it's just me, hopefully, and maybe someone else there dining with me, um, I'll take off my mask and eat and people will be keeping a separation, right? There won't be a table full of people next to me. Is that the way it'll work? I mean, I think that all of the scenarios we haven't thought through, and that's why it's so important that workers are involved in the decisions that are made at every level, um, from the workplace um, to what's um, being the decisions being made in terms of reopening at the local and state level. I, I think that those voices are very important because you know, we're the ones doing the work. And so um, we have ideas about how to keep ourselves and our coworkers safe. Okay, so well, I, I guess then, you know, Brenda, just from your perspective, what personally for you, um, if you're working in a restaurant, will make you feel safe? If I walk in and I'm abiding the six foot rule and all of that, but I'm not wearing a mask and I sit down to order, will you serve me? Um, personally, I would feel safest if restaurants weren't open in phase one. It's okay. not an essential business, okay. um, you know, and we do have a shortage on PPE right now and cleaning supplies. And we need to make sure that our healthcare workers um, and other businesses that are essential grocery stores, post offices, um, all of those things that keep our day to day worker um, day to day economy going kind of um we need to make sure that they have all of that equipment first okay as far as restaurants again this governor's order and, and we know you know it's going to be in phases and how quickly they open to what degree but the governor's order is just um saying you can do so restaurants now will decide on their own if they don't want to open they're not ready to they don't have to is, is that correct and in terms of deciding to do that i'm wondering if some restaurants especially smaller ones might say well we'd like to open but we're so small keeping it at 50 percent capacity, we're not going to make enough money to make it worth our while. What do you think, Vonda? Um, I think that that is very valid. And I think that right now you're seeing more and more um, restaurants offering takeout options. And perhaps that is the way to go where folks are bringing it out to you and phase into based on your own capacity and demand um, into full opening. Brenda, you agree? Does that make sense? I I agree. I mean, we've already been doing takeout um, at a lot of restaurants and it, it is different. Like if you think about going out to eat, that's an experience. You go out and you sit down and you relax and you're enjoying the conversation with people. How does that change when your server and everybody around you has a has a mask on? It's, it takes away that interpersonal relationship that you have. I think you really hit it on the head. I'm trying to think about why people go to restaurants, especially when you can carry out the terrific food if you choose to do it. And it's just what you said, the social aspect. So I'm wondering if the two of you think, if indeed the restaurants open and the workers do return to a degree and they feel safe, do you think at this point um, the customers are ready to come sit down? I don't know. I mean, you have a lot of people that, that seem to be ready for that. Um, personally, I don't feel safe doing that. Um, I work downtown, so my restaurant's not open for a little bit, luckily, um, because it is a, a big venue. Um, but it, it's going to be up to every individual to make that call. Um, but with a lower capacity on restaurants and a smaller amount of serving staff, you have to think about your people that make an hourly wage that's less than the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And if they're making those tips, are they tipping out other people as well? on their lower wage that they bring in because of a lower capacity? We don't have answers to those questions. All right, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm so glad you both came on. As I said, this 10 minutes goes very quickly, but boy, you uh, have hit on a bunch of points that I hadn't thought about. And it's, it's not as easy and simple, is it, as just saying, all right, let's open up and let's have the customers and let's start serving meals. There's a lot to consider here, isn't there? Definitely, definitely. 
Listen, thank you both so much for coming on this morning. Vonda McDaniel and uh, Brenda Waybrandt, thank you. And I both be safe. And I look forward to sitting down in a restaurant sometime when I think we all feel it's safe. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, for you so having much. Us. Terrific guests. Listen, we'll take a break. Um, interesting. And I'll be curious to see what some of you think on phone calls as well as on uh, Facebook at newschannel5.com. Where do you stand with uh, deciding when to return to a restaurant? I think it's going to be a while for me for the very reason that it's a social experience and I like to sit there and talk and you can't do that with the precautions in place. But I do want to continue to support these businesses. So yeah, I carry out food, okay? I, I think I order out at least two or three times a week and go pick it up to go. But I'm uh, not sure I'm ready to sit down. What about you? Listen, we'll take a break. When we come back, one of the hardest hit populations, and there have been a lot, are musicians. This is Music City. Next up, Manuel Delgado with us, a musician and owner of Delgado Guitars, joining us to talk about the impact on that aspect of the economy. We'll be back with more on Morning Line right after this.